Hello everyone and welcome to the Best Day Ever Crafting Podcast. This is a podcast about my making journey and celebrating with you all the reasons why making, crafting, creating every day makes for the best day ever. My name is Trisha and I can be found on Instagram as Tie-Dye Diva. I can also be found on Ravelry as Tie-Dye Diva. Let's see, where else can you find me? You can find me on Instagram as the underscore fiber tree which is a place where I um, talk about shop updates as it relates to the fibertree.com. Um, and uh, let's see, you can also find me <laughs> at the fibertree.com on the web, which is the website for my uh, stationery, uh, journaling and sticker shop. Anywhere else you can find me? Here on YouTube, of course. <laughs> How are you all doing today? I hope everyone is doing well. I'm doing fairly well, a bit scattered brain. It's been a super busy work week. Um, and to be quite honest, not feeling the greatest today, but I'm pushing through. I am pushing through. I, um, let's see, haven't done much today. Today is Saturday. What is today's date? Yeah, today is Saturday, May 21. So it's been kind of a lazy day. Um, I got a few things done though. I'm a little bit of tidy up around the house. Dinner is cooked, um, but I've just been resting, been resting, resting, um, just trying to recover from a busy work week. And yeah, I did get a little bit of knitting done this morning, which is awesome because I don't always get a chance to knit on Saturday morning. So yeah, I've just been kind of chilling all day and um, Prepping, prepping myself to make sure I got this podcast recorded today. So if I'm not my usual chipper self, then you know I'm not 100% today, but I'm here and that's all that matters. So what's on the agenda for today? We'll do a little bit of admin talk as we're about to wrap up our make along. Um, I have some knitting. <laughs> I'm telling you, I hope I don't struggle to I hope I don't struggle through this episode today, but I do have knitting. I have some knitting to share. One finished object, which I'm super, super excited about. And I'm looking around because I think I left it on my dining room table. So I may have to pause and go grab it, but no worries there. Um, I'll give you an update on the works in progress, some of the things that I am currently working on. And we'll wrap it up with a little bit of journaling and shop update talk, okay? So as far as the make along goes, for uh, the past two months, we have been working hard on our vest. So um, it was called the vest along, best day ever vest along. And um, you guys have been putting out some beautiful projects. Um, so we've got about another week, maybe a little bit more than a week. So if you think you can bust out a vest in a week, if you haven't already started, you're welcome to just jump right on in. Um, there will be prizes, so the next time I record, hopefully in a couple of weeks, I will be able to share not only the prizes, but also the winners. So head over to the Ravelry group, um, post your pictures in the, um, in the thread for the, uh, for the, the make along and that, because that's where we'll be drawing prizes for finished objects. Okay. And I will show you progress on my vest in just a minute. So I do have one finished object. Let me just look real quick because I kind of thought I brought it in here. Hold tight. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> All right. So I finished a pair of socks. Here they are. So I've been working on these for maybe about six weeks um, off and on. The yarn is Lion Brand Sock Yarn, which is a discontinued uh, base. I'm sorry, I'm looking up there because I think I have another um, another skein of it. But um, so it's Lion Brand Sock Yarn. Um, it is, as you can tell, a gradient um, sock yarn, gradient and stripes. Um, I believe it was a 80% uh, wool, 20% nylon. And as you can see, I did do a contrast on the uh, toe as well as the cuffs on a one by one twisted rib. I used a US uh, one and a half needle 
and I did a traditional um, heel flap uh, and gusset uh, and I think they turned out pretty good. So if you've been watching um, the podcast for a while, you know that I had been making most of my socks using um, the afterthought heel method. And um, I have a really good friend, Stacy, who I talked about on the, the previous um, episode where I talked about Marilyn Sheep and Wool, who's primarily a crocheter, but she has really been taking a liking to sock knitting. And when I tell you just to running off with it, it's just incredible to see the progress she's made. And I kind of got inspired to try something different, just watching her enthusiasm. Um, and I kind of felt like I was getting complacent, just doing an afterthought heel every time. So that's what inspired me to try the um, traditional uh, uh, heel flap and gusset. And I love it. I loved it so much. It was so much fun seeing um, everything come together. Um, if you recall from a couple of episodes ago, I did have some issues with um, the heel turn, which is here. I ended up with way too little stitches. Um, so I took that out and corrected it. And uh, I think it looks pretty good. It's not perfect, but um, I think it looks pretty good. I also had some difficulty um, on this side with the the decreases, I think I got a little off at some point. And, um, and there's another point where on the pickup where I just got off just a little bit. So I'm telling you this, not just to point out my mistakes, but um, I think the socks look pretty good. And if you're new to sock knitting or you've never knit socks and you wanna give it a shot, um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just do your best and socks are very forgiving, especially if you use a busy yarn like this. Um, I'm gonna hold it back so you can't see all of the mistakes, but there, um, there, there are a couple of mistakes in, in here, but I think you really, really can't tell. This yarn, like I said, is super, super busy and um, it's very forgiving. So um, yeah, what else did I wanna say about these? Um, the contrast of the cuff and the heel is leftover yarn from Legacy Fiber Arts um, from my Rocket Tee, um, and I believe the color is Antique Lace. And I still have quite a bit of this yarn left over. I might have enough to actually do a pair of shorty socks. Or it may go in my crochet granny uh, stripe blanket, so we'll see. I kind of feel like there was something else I wanted to mention about these socks. I do love the way they they fit. They fit so well. Um, Afterthought Hill socks fit me well too, but I can honestly say that these fit a lot better. So um, I definitely see more um, um, traditional uh, uh, slip stitch heel uh, and um, I'm at a loss. <laughs> I see definitely see more of these <laughs> in my future. What is your favorite um, method of knitting socks? Uh, there's the, I think there's the Aya Partridge heel I wanna try. I've even seen a heel where um, the decreases are coming like a V, um, which I have been, I feel like I saw that sock on Ravelry. It, you know how you're surfing through and you forget where you were. So if anybody knows what pattern that is, where the, the decreases are, actually happening on the back of the heel and it's like a V. It looks so cool. So I'd like to try that. Um, let's see here. I think uh, Denise of Earth Tones Girl, she loves the shadow wrap heel. So I definitely want to try that. So definitely stay tuned for more uh, sock knitting exploration. Really, really happy about um, being able to do that. So speaking of sock knitting, um, the 28th of this month, which is next week, I believe it's Thursday, starts the Crazy Sock Lady um, Sock Knitting Camp. I'm, I know I'm saying this wrong. What is it called? It is the, I'm gonna link to it. Anyway, Kay of the um, Crazy Sock Lady podcast is hosting a summer make-along where we're knitting socks. Um, and there are pretty much no rules except it has to be a new pro project. Um, it doesn't have to be her patterns, um, just knit socks. 
Um, they can be worsted weight, DK weight, um, socks, socks, socks. It doesn't have to be um, any particular person's pattern. There will be prizes. So definitely check out um, Kay's latest, if not her latest podcast, then an episode previously where she talks about the summer sock make along. Maybe that's the name of it. Anyway, I'll link to all of it so you'll be able to access the information. So very happy about these. Oh, the last thing I want to mention about these socks is that both of these socks were completed using one 50 gram um, hank of yarn. So um, this line brand sock yarn does come in 50 gram um, hanks, which is the reason why they're inverse. So you can see they're not exactly matching. I just finished one um, and when I finished the uh, cuff, just picked up and did the other one. So, um, but I like that. I think they're really, really cool this way. So if you've got some 50 gram um, sock yarn laying around, it's quite possible to get a pair of socks out of them. And these aren't even shorties, as you can see. They're gonna come just about mid calf. So you can get a really nice pair of socks with 50 grams. And um, for reference, I wear a size eight shoe. Okay, so I think that's all I have to say about those. So that's my only finished object. Well, I, I have a half finished object because I cast on for another pair of socks. And one is finished. And here it is. I'm gonna, let me take one of these socks off of here, off of the blocker and put, I just love the way socks look after they've been blocked. <laughs> okay. Focus, Trisha, focus, focus. So again, I was watching Kay of the Crazy Sock Ladies podcast and she knit these socks using this exact yarn. So these are knit from one of the recent Yarnable um, subscription uh, club colors. Uh, and the color is Mermazing. And again, with these, I just did a traditional uh, slip stitch heel flap and gusset. Um, and I think they turned out pretty, pretty good. But look at this color. Such beautiful dyeing. Um, like I said, when I saw K's, I was like, I, that's it. That's going to be my, my next pair of socks. I rarely put, um, have two pair of socks on the needles at one time, but I was just itching to cast these on. Um, so there is a weight, a current wait list for the Yarnable uh, Sock Club, but I didn't have to wait long when I was on the wait list. So um, it's pretty cool because you get a skein of yarn every month and fun little accessories um, to go with that match the um, the color of the yarn. I'm gonna show you my latest one where we get to acquisitions. So here it is. Now on this particular sock, I used a US1 needle. Um, talking about um, sock exploration and just trying to stretch myself a little bit more. I had always used a size two or a one and a half for making my socks, um, but I really love the stitch definition with the US one. Really, really, really love how tight those stitches look. I do have to go in and pick up there. That must have been where I started uh, or where I ended, um, but I can easily pick that up and fix that. So very, very pleased with the way these turned out. Um, and I've already cast on for stock number two. So that's one of the things I did after breakfast this morning. I went ahead and cast on for sock number two. So there's no second sock syndrome going on here. So hopefully I'll get a chance to get some more progress done on these for the weekend. Um, and again, this um, these are being knit on a US one uh, needle and these are from Haya Haya. And I just love my progress keeper that was gifted to me. Love, love, love it. And it matches perfectly. So again, that's Mermazing from Hypnotic Yarns. And this podcast should be called Knit Friends Are the Best Friends. <laughs> These socks are hanging out in this adorable project bag that was also gifted to me by one of my knit friends. Thank you, Stacy. 
it says Trisha's Knitty Bits. So I love, love, love this. And I can't remember the maker she got this from, um, but I absolutely love it. Look at that. So cool. And it's perfect for socks. So I'm going to take my other sock out of here. Make sure I keep them all together. Okay. So next up, I've been working really, really hard on my vest for the vest alone. And uh, here is my progress thus far. So this, I am knitting the um, Trim Vest by Blacker Yarns, T-R-Y-M. Um, it is knit in a DK weight and it is, very, it is a very basic traditional vest. But when you think about a vest, you think about maybe a slightly cropped garment that has a V-neck and, and um, no sleeves and ribbing around the V-neck, ribbing around the sleeves and around the bottom. That's what the Trim Vest is. The only difference or well, the only addition that you have uh, is, let me try to get to it. On the sides, there's some beautiful broken rib detailing. So there's my broken rib on one side. And also, as you can see, the back falls a little uh, lower than the front. So there's one side, there is another side where that um, broken rib is repeated. You can see on some of these where there's like a little indentation, that's where um, I didn't do something right. Either I was supposed to purl, but I knit it, or I knit it and I was supposed to purl. But I'm hoping that that will come out, um, that will all block out. So hopefully that will be the case. I'm trying to see what's going on here that looks a little, okay, that's just a loose stitch. So I'm really, really enjoying this, but you know what I discovered while making this? Oh, I didn't discover, but this reaffirmed to me that I have a very long torso. So the pattern has you knit to 12 inches before you um, separate and do the back and the front separately. So I knit 12 inches and I tried it on. <laughs> Let me stand up so you can get a feel. So I knit 12 inches and tried it on, and I swear it was it was right here. <laughs> Not the look I was going for. So I, since that time, have knit about another inch and a half. So I think I'm going to knit another inch and a half, and I should be okay. I am going to allow a little bit of space for um, wet blocking, which I think will make it a little bit longer. I mean, I don't want it super long. I do want it to be somewhat cropped. Um, I'm looking down because my I thought I had my pattern, but that's in my um, in my lounge chair in my, my bedroom. So I think I'll be okay with that. I may um, try it on one more time just to make sure, but um, so far so good. The yarn that I'm using is from Kelborn Woolens. Um, the base is their Scout base. It's a 100% non-superwash wool, and the color is Mulberry. Absolutely beautiful. It's like a deep wine heathered color. That's that's pretty accurate. Maybe a little bit deeper than that. Um, I do. I have a slight filter on for a little bit more light. So sometimes when I put a filter on, it looks a little washed out. But um, that's a pretty good representation. Um, very well written pattern, very uh, beginner friendly, very straightforward. Um, it's definitely one of those patterns where you can watch podcasts or movies um, because you don't have to. There's not, there's no cables or lace or anything like that. You just have to pay attention when you get to the side panel. So really, really enjoying this. And um, I've got my third bowl already caked up and I think I might not even have to go into the fourth so that'll be nice and maybe that can end up in the giveaway pile and this is hanging out in a new project bag so we're gonna do a quick a quick uh, sneak peek at some acquisitions so this is a podcast this is 
This is a project bag from Amy Beth of Fat Squirrel Fibers. And it doesn't need any caption. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a super heavy canvas uh, fabric and it just has all the fun maker things on it, particularly as it relates to sewing. Um, look at that pink sewing machine, so stinking cute. I believe this is the Erin weight bag. Um, so it's not the largest of the bags. I think it's the next to the largest. So it's perfect for a sweater, sweater size project. Um, I've already used two skeins of the, of the Scout yarn. Um, and I've got the whole project in here along with another skein and I still have tons of space left. So, yep. Love, love, love that. So that is the progress on that. So what else? What else? What else? I have made epic progress on my Metamorphic sweater. So Metamorphic is a pattern by the lovely Andrea Maori. Um, and I have been showing this for quite some time and I will continue to be showing it for quite some time because um, sweater knitting plus size sweater knitting is a labor of self-love. So it takes, it takes a minute. It's not a quick project, um, but it is so worth it and so enjoyable. So here is my progress on my metamorphic. I have actually finished the entire body. Uh, the ribbing is done and I am ready to pick up for the sleeves. Um, if this is your first time here, I'll just give you a quick um, rundown of the yarns that I use. So for the neckline, I used a DK weight by uh, Ellie of Craft House Magic. As you can see, it's speckled to coordinate with the colors I used in the body, which is alternating stripes of a color changing fingering with a solid uh, DK. And here is my color changing fingering by Yarn Hero and the color is Tiki Bar. Love, love, love Yarn Hero. I've always talk about how beautiful her colors are and the main color is this beautiful um soft pink it's like a whisper of pink this is this is pretty accurate what you're seeing now it's just so pretty the color is called secrets um and it's absolutely beautiful so this is from not house yarns this is their uh, la di da dk i believe and I'm knitting this on a US 6. US 6 for the body and um, the neckline and the ripping um, calls for a US 4. So I did use a US 4 for the top ripping, but I continued with the US 6 for the bottom ripping simply because I don't like it when a sweater kind of like cinches in in that midsection. I carry a lot of weight there and I don't want I don't want to knit a pocket for it. I kind of want my sweaters to kind of like skim over that, um, over my midsection, which I think is a lot more flattering. Um, and you can also see that this sweater has a very simple detail of a, um, a seam in the main color that goes down the, the front, the back, and each sleeve. So when I pick up for the sleeves, I will be um, continuing that seam. And I do believe I will be doing long sleeves on this. Um, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll just see how it goes. I've seen, I think the pattern calls for it to be knit um, using, I think it's, is it elbow length sleeves or bracelet sleeves? So not super long. <coughs> So we'll see, I'll just keep trying it on and seeing how it goes. But I absolutely love, I'm loving working on this and I can't wait to get started with the sleeves. So that's my metamorphic, epic progress on that. Let's see, any other 
projects. I think that's it. I think that is it. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about acquisitions. <laughs> acquisitions, not a whole lot of acquisitions, um, but acquisitions nonetheless. So the first thing I want to show you is my Yarnable subscription that just came in. Well, not just came in, I would say maybe about two weeks ago. And the theme for this month is avocados. So let's, let's look at the yarn first. How beautiful is that? Look at those speckles, so beautiful. Um. The co so the color is avocado, <laughs> and as you can see, there's a little there's an avocado doing some weightlifting. So adorable. This uh, appears to be the same base that the um, blue socks were knit out of, which is a lovely, lovely base. It's so soft and so squishy. She's even got some red speckles in there. Did you see that? So I'm really gonna work hard to get these club skeins uh, knit up. The colors are so beautiful and I don't want the yarn just sitting around. Although I've already picked out yarn for my next pair of socks. I'm looking over there because it's right over there on my table where I wound um, my yarn last night. So, but it's not from Yarnable. It's actually from um, my farmer's daughter's uh, farmer's daughter sock club. Um, will be my next pair of socks. And perhaps I'll be able to get these cast on right after that, unless the next color coming in from Yarnable is irresistible. So we'll see. Um, so I do plan on cranking out a ton of socks for the summer sock camp. That's the name of it, the summer sock camp. Yes, all is not lost <laughs> in this brain of mine. And the avocado yarn, came with this adorable little pouch bag, which is definitely large enough for socks. I mean, look at that. So stinking cute. It's just a basic uh, project bag, very well made. There's no lining, but there's also no exposed seams. Well, a few exposed seams on the um, zipper part, but not a deal breaker, not a deal breaker at all. So we've got yarn, we've got a little cute little pouch, a pin, avocado with knitting on the front, too cute. And finally, a avocado progress keeper. So super, super fun, super, super fun um, sock yarn club. So thank you so much, Yarn. Love, love, love that. Next up, uh, some more sock yarn came with the mail because mustache yarns had a sale. And you guys know how I feel about a sale, especially um, on yarn that can be a bit pricey. So I was very, very happy to pick up this beautiful skein from mustache yarn. This is on her fingering sock weight base, which is a 75 25 superwash merino nylon blend it's 460 yards and this is her perfect mustache set so if i'm not mistaken these are two separate um 50 gram skeins wound together so you get a perfect set of uh matching socks matching stripes um which usually is not a big deal for me i um as you can see from my other pair of socks, they're super, super non-matchy, but um, I guess it's nice every once in a while to have a pair that do match. This is so beautiful. I'm just looking at this because it's so beautiful. I feel like every time I pick it up, I'm seeing something new. There are some beautiful speckles in here, some reds and some dark greens, it looks like. So just a beautiful skein of yarn. So again, this is from Mustache Yarns. 
let's see what else in acquisitions um I picked up a bag from Amazon so when I went to Maryland Sheep and Wool I was desperately looking for a backpack um and I saw this on Amazon I saw this particular backpack on Amazon um but I hesitated because when I went back it had sold out so I happened to be watching Rochelle's podcast of Queen's Queen's Yarn Boutique and um, she showed the exact bag. I was like, oh, I want that bag. I knew I wanted it. I thought it was a really nice bag. But when I saw her bag, that just confirmed it. So here's the bag. It's actually called the Knitter's Backpack. And it's by this company. Not quite sure how that's pronounced. Um, but there's just so many details. So I'll just quickly go through it. First of all, it's it's huge. It is, if I had to guess, I would say it's at least it's at least 20 inches tall. You've got the little holes for um, pulling your yarn through. There are pockets on each side. The pockets are super deep, so I could probably get a good size bottle of water in there. Um, there are handles as well as padded um, straps for a backpack. This front zipper opens all the way up. And they say this is where you can put your knitting needles, um, crochet hooks. There's some elastic little bits here so you can stick things in there. They won't get lost. There are also pockets and more elastic bits on this side. <laughs> Everything is completely lined, um, very well made. And then on the inside, there are so many pockets on the inside of this bag. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine pockets on the inside of this bag, and it could be more. So, this probably would have been too large for Maryland Sheep and Wool to carry on my back. But if you're going to like um, maybe a weekend getaway with um, your maker friends, and you want to stuff all your projects in here, this will fit the bill. Um, you can even, I think you would have room for a change of clothes and several knitting projects. It's just a really cool bag. And I think the price point was really, really good. So I will link to it. Um, so, so happy it um, came back in stock. Um, and it also comes in a beautiful pale pink. I'm actually thinking about getting the pale pink one too for just those fun, um, fun getaways. It's just perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh, and then I also love this portion here. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my time and open the bag up and I'm gonna put in I'm gonna put my um some pins in here so that you can see them showing through the um the clear plastic so that's my plan for that so again knitter's backpack from amazon just one of the reasons why we love amazon and of course it was at my doorstep less than 24 hours after ordering i will definitely link to it so the only other thing acquisition that I have to share with you is a an amazing gift that was sent to me and I'm not going to tell you who sent it because I didn't ask permission. I'm going to go ahead and tell you anyway because <laughs> when I show you some of these things it might be pretty obvious. Um, Rochelle from Queen's Yarn Boutique sent me the most amazing package. First of all, she sent me this gorgeous, one-of-a-kind mini socks set. How amazingly gorgeous is this? Do you guys have project ideas for this? Let me know because I want to get this cast on really, really quick. I'm thinking a cow, but maybe you have another suggestion. It would also be beautiful in the yoke of a sweater. Um, 
but yeah let me know if you have any ideas for uh, mini skeins for cows um so this is her reflection sock mini set um each one is 92 yards for a total of 552 yards so i can get a pretty good size project out of this and they're just absolutely gorgeous beautiful 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 so she sent me that she sent me a project bag i um have one another one of her project bags here that I have a cow that I'm working on. Um, you guys have seen this real quick sneak peek. I did get a couple of rows in on this this week. I wasn't going to show it, but since I've got the bag, I'll show you the progress on the Hill Street Road Cow, Hill View Road Cow, and another Queen's Yarn Boutique bag. So super cute. I love polka dots. I love the um, I love the interfacing that she uses too. So really, really fun project bag with an awesome handle for on the go knitting. So that, she sent another fun little bag. This is also, these are also great for taking to yarn festivals or quick yarn shopping trips. It says yarn squad and it's a backpack as well and it also draws strings. So it could be a project bag or it can be a backpack for some on the go shopping. But wait, there's more. She sent this amazingly beautiful worsted weight gradient set. I'm gonna have to look this up. I know it's worsted weight, but I don't know the exact yardage, so. Um, but it's absolutely beautiful. Look at that. That base just looks so squishalicious and beautiful. So again, any ideas for this? This is definitely screaming the yoke of a sweater to me. Um, maybe with the gray or charcoal base or cream base sweater. Um, so beautiful. Love this so much. There are a couple of more things. Um, a couple of fun little things she included. This Katrinko's, um, this beautiful uh, darning needle. It almost looks iridescent. It's really, really pretty. And these adorable ladybug buttons. Super, super cute. So thank you so much, Rochelle. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was a wonderful reprieve um, after work when this came in the mail. So thank you so much for that. So I think I've covered all of the acquisitions. I'm looking around, making sure I didn't forget anything. Um, so other than um, knitting, I'm doing some, I've been doing a lot of late spring cleaning around my home. Um, purging things in this room, which is my craft room. I got this closet behind me almost completely cleared out. That's where I keep um, sweater quantities of yarn and there's some fabric in there. Um, I do have to go through some of the fabric in there and make some sense of that. But um, I have all of my sweater yarn just neatly packed away in some clear bins so I can see what's going on in there. Um, I did a deep purge of my um, bedroom closet, um, really focusing on clothes that I know I love. Um, for example, the shirt that I'm wearing now, which I made, which is a fiber and cloth pattern. The name is completely escaping me, but I'm gonna put it right down here. Um, my favorite part of this pattern being this modified scoop neck. So in my closet now, I have a space for all of my handmade items and I was shocked when I really put them all together I mean, they were in the closet I knew they were there but to see them all to see this nice large section of all the things I've made and types of clothing I love to wear is was really really nice but it was a lot of work too um let's see what else have we been doing trying to get the patio in order we just put together some patio furniture we being I supervised and my husband and sons <laughs> Put it together so trying to get the patio together so we can spend 
lots of evenings there sipping on wine and knitting and chatting and having um, company. So um, that's pretty much what I've been doing. I have been doing some journaling. Um, not as much as I'd like to, as I would have liked to. For a good week, my living room was just a just a mess because I was having a refrigerator delivered, a stove part um, that kept the day for it to come just kept being delayed. So I had kitchen stuff in the living room, which was blocking my way to my journaling table, which was driving me up the wall. But um, finally got the refrigerator, finally got the stove fixed. Um, so super, super happy about that. Living room is back in order and I can get to my journaling table once again. Um, other than that, things are going well. Cashmere the cat is doing really, really well. Since his neuter surgery, he's, I feel like every week he's more and more content and happy and um, he's just a good, funny kitty. I recently found a, um, that YouTube has YouTube TV for cats. So I stumbled across it. I know I didn't stumble across it. I know that our phones are listening to us. My phone knows I has a cat. My phone knows I has a cat. My phone knows I have a cat. Um, so that's how those um, videos showed up in my YouTube feed. And he absolutely loves them. It's just the funniest thing to see him just sitting there looking back and forth. Because it's like birds and other animals, you know, moving really quickly. You know, that just gets cats just all excited. So he just sits there. And one time he watched it, watched it on the computer and he's like moving the mouse. And it's almost like he's trying to do... Re and he rewinds and re oh let me see that again and his head is moving and he's just purring and just loving every minute of it so he's he's a really really fun companion and um doing really really well so yeah that's about it um don't forget to um post your pictures of your vest in the rivalry group so you'll be eligible for prizes. Um, I'll be working, um, getting the prize bin together in the next couple of weeks and we'll get um, some names announced and some prizes out to you guys. Uh, I think that's it. Don't forget about the summer sock camp from Crazy Sock Lady. Uh, what else? Oh, for those of you who love to journal, um, Something popped up in my Patreon feed from Journal with Purpose. There's going to be a free week-long journaling um, course. Um, so I would definitely link to that as well. Um, and the only other thing I would do right now is I will insert a couple of pictures of some new things, new sticker sheets that will be coming to the shop uh, probably Wednesday of next week. Um, I'll be away tomorrow and Monday. So I'll take Tuesday after work to get those uploaded to the shop. Um, so if I'm able to, I'll insert pictures. If I don't insert pictures here, then I will do probably a YouTube short or I'll just do a quick picture here on YouTube so you can see what the new project products are. And of course, I'll be posting them um, on Instagram in the, the Fiber Tree page okay Whew, that was a mouthful okay I think that covers everything I hope you all are doing well and finding lots of joy in your making and I will see you again very soon for another episode bye